I'm Jack Smackey and this is my van build. I've been working on this van for about a total of about six months now and I'm just about wrapped up with the build. There's a few more things left to do uh, so things are going to slow down for the most part uh, on the build side of stuff but uh, I'm still going to carry on with the videos uh, start doing some adventure stuff uh, taking this van out and testing it and putting it to its paces if you will until eventually I, uh, I leave this place and do full-time van life uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, with that said, there are uh, the few things I want to accomplish is one of the things is it gets pretty hot in that cab. Um, so what I want to do, I tried to find um, a shade to fit this, but because it's such a large window, it's been difficult trying to find something that fits. Um, so what I decided to do is I actually have some of this um, underlayment from when I installed the laminate floor. Now this piece isn't big enough, but I do have um, a piece that's actually um, big enough times two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue two of these together and then I'm going to cover it with some fabric and I'm going to utilize that as my windscreen uh, cover. It'll be done you know, from the inside. Uh, it'll be somewhat insulated. Now I realize that this underlayment is, you know, pretty much guaranteed and not going to be uh, UV stable. So that's why I'm going to cover it with some fabric. Uh, I've got some outdoor fabric um, that should hold up quite well. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to stretch out some drop cloth. I bought, bought a small piece of drop cloth. Uh, hopefully the wind doesn't play up here. Um, and I'm going to use the drop cloth at, uh, to pattern uh, the window. So hopefully uh, I'll be able to get that and then I can um, glue the two underlayment pieces together, lay the template on there and cut that out. And then I can start um, trying to organize the fabric. So let's do that. It was, it was dead calm just a minute ago. All right, so what I did was I, I used this black, um, black line on the windshield as a guide, and I just dotted all the way around. Now on the inside, there is a little bit of a discrepancy. So you can see here, there's a, you know, I need to add a little bit. So what I'm going to do is when I trace this plastic out onto the underlayment I'm gonna give it a little bit you know a little bit half inch a little bit bigger and then once I get that cut out then I can put this in place here and I can fit it and trim it as as needed okay so I've got this uh, underlayment vapor barrier um, I got it laid out and the two pieces glued together and I trimmed it according to the uh, the template that I made I cut it a little big um, so now we're gonna dry fit it into the van and see how it fits
that's that's uh that's pretty actually pretty amazing. Ta-da! So I wouldn't consider myself an award-winning quilter by no means, uh, but I think I did an alright job on this. Uh, so basically I took some uh, underlayment from some flooring, just a little bit of foam, uh, and then I added some canvas uh, to the other side, and I stitched it every six inches to kind of keep it all together, and then I put a nice little edge on it, which, you know, when I say nice, it's, uh, you know, it's better than being a raw edge. Uh, I wouldn't exactly say it's it's you know really nice, but at the end of the day, it wasn't uh, too expensive to put together. So let's uh, see how this thing fits. Uh, it's a bit saggy. Um, but I think overall, I think it fits pretty well. Uh, I might have to add some uh, vertical stiffeners. So when you live in the same place for 29 years, you're bound to collect some things over the, over the time that you're here. Now, I talked about um, adding some stiffeners to the sunshade, and lo and behold, I recall <laughs> a spot in my garage where I had some blind slats laying around. Now these are actually the perfect size. I don't have to cut them or anything. Um, and I have enough to facilitate what I want to accomplish. So just enough to keep a, this from, you know, falling over on itself, give it some rigidness. So I'm gonna, probably going to use some spray adhesive to see if that'll, you know, do it. A little loss of battery there, but uh, yeah, I went upstairs, uh, grabbed the 3M adhesive spray adhesive, and uh, got those mounted on there. Gonna let them sit and uh, set up for a minute before I throw it in the van. But that should do it. All right, let's see how this trips out. <laughs> That's mucho, much better. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a lot better. Now, if you've been watching the videos, you'll have probably seen me pull out this ramp uh, several times, or actually see it um, being used as a workbench. Now, at the start of this project, I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna end up doing with this ramp. I uh, first thought maybe just you know get rid of it um, then there was a second thought well maybe I could keep it you know maybe somebody would want to use it down the road as a ramp or whatever uh, and then as I got further into the project I realized how much of an asset this uh, this ramp actually has turned out to be uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna keep it as is um, what I can do with it on the road traveling around is I can simply just pull it out and for a quite a long ways, it'll actually support itself. Um, I could probably get six or seven feet out from the truck before it, I'll need a, um, a, a second support on the end of it. Um, 
But as it is right here, it serves a really neat purpose because it, it adds a second um, sort of an outdoor table, if you will, um, that we can uh, I can put stuff on, you know, serve food or you know whatever the case, play cards, throw your beer on there, sit on it, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, just it, it's been used and abused. It's got paint and nicks from the saw and so forth. Uh, so it's not the most pretty thing in the world, but you know, worst case scenario, you know, I could throw a coat of uh, finished paint on it, you know, take a pressure washer and clean this ramp off and then, um, you know, paint it and, and then it'll look probably better than, uh, than just naked aluminum. But at the end of the day, I'm going to keep it, I'm going to be able to utilize it. But one of the things that I got to do, one of the things I got to do is I have to close this hole off. And I got to do that because airflow comes in into the van through this hole, and I, I don't really want unwanted, uh, you know, air, especially traveling down the road, because that's just going to kick up a lot of dust and a lot of things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a door, kind of like this that I have uh, currently in, in, installed. Here. I'm going to install a door here on a, on a hinge, and, and that way I can. You know unlatch it lower this down and have access to the to the ramp to pull it out as needed but otherwise it, it'll be a sealed sort of system <clears throat> so i gotta rip this uh this one by down uh it's a little bit of a taper from one side to the other about you know quarter inch could be the truck could be you know my build but at the end of the day we're gonna rip this down to the correct height and then we'll go from there all right so i got those three pieces cut fit in there kind of how they want to be and then uh we'll be able to clean these up put a hinge on there some latches uh some paint and uh we'll call her done all right, now that I got some paint on these guys, I can uh, get them installed. Well, there's a tube, there's a box tube underneath here, so we're going to have to do some uh, self-drilling screws. So we'll see how that goes. Well, that went in a lot easier than I was expecting it to. Good enough though. 
So what I want to work on today is something that I've already revisited a couple of times. Once when I installed it originally and the second time when I had um, the great door debacle, um, if you caught that episode. Um, I'm actually still experiencing some issues with it rubbing and hitting when I open the door. Not so much now that things have warmed up, but when it cooled off towards the end of November last, last fall, um, the door really started to jam up. And you can kind of see right here uh, that I've banged it up pretty well. So there's a problem with clearance. Um, I need to actually make this, you know, either a, another bit of an angle, like a two-part angle, or set it back up in here. Either way, I gotta revisit this section, take it apart, and rebuild that part. The other problem that I have here, it's a combination of things, is one that this door actually has a bow, or when it's open, has a sag, and that's causing a great gap right here. Um, I'm not able to close that gap um, because of the fact that um, I have clearance problems here, and of course, I can't really, and with the bow and everything. Um, this gap here lets in light, lets in air, lets in uh, mosquitoes, as you can see. Um, where'd he go? Uh, so I wanna try to uh, fix this and find a better solution to this problem. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna work on today. Okay, so as you can see, uh, it's quite ugly up here and leaving this section, you know, on, finished isn't really an aesthetically sound option so I definitely have to do something different uh, the other thing here is you'll see there I've got this uh, these these aren't in here uh, very well anyways uh, so this whole system is kind of you know dodgy in the, in the beginning I've had to modify this once already so um, the frustration had set in and I really didn't want to mess with it so I ended up uh, just covering it up and then uh, attempting to forget it, <laughs> but it is uh, coming back to haunt me. So what I want to accomplish now is to try to fix this in a way that um, I don't have to tear it apart again. Uh, I need a little bit more clearance. I need, to get, I need to get the shiplap closer to the spring, at least here in the midpoint. So if we were able to, you know, make a different uh, angle or a double compound angle here, uh, that would help out a lot. Uh, so I'm going to make some cardboard templates and I'm going to try to um, sort how I can fix this so then it's a solid and a, a finished uh, structural component so it doesn't I don't have to mess with it anymore. So Okay, cool. I've got these the new blocks. I uh, epoxied these two three quarter inch uh, pieces of plywood together and I laid out and cut four of the blocks now I am NOT a fan of this jigsaw now it might be 100% operator error but I've tried a bunch of different things and no matter what happens I always end up uh, it ends up walking the blade walks all over the place so I cut this one crooked so I scabbed a piece on there and then tomorrow I'll trim it with the, with the skill saw and get it straightened up. But for the most part, these are gonna go up. These are gonna go up in there like that. Uh, obviously the hole is um, for around the spring. Now I don't know, it should be big enough, but I don't know. What we're gonna have to do though is we're gonna have to split these into two pieces in order to get them installed. Um, no way to get that no way to get that uh, in there in one piece. Um, it's going to be a bugger if I ever have to replace the spring, but at the end of the day, it's, uh, it is what it is. Okay, so I've got my, uh, my blocking uh, glued up into place. I was going to epoxy set these, but unfortunately the epoxy uh, was delayed shipment, so I canceled the order and I just went with a simple construction adhesive. Hopefully, Hopefully that construction adhesive will work. So this basically gives me a little bit more uh, curve so that the door doesn't pinch uh, when it opens up. Okay, so I got this uh, 
I got this trim piece in here dry fitted. I uh, took a couple of goes. Took a couple of goes to get it to fit, but uh, we got it up in here. I think what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll paint it quick uh, before I fasten it in place. And then under here, uh, we can get a nice nice bead of caulk. Now I rounded this edge off so that way I wouldn't uh, bonk my head as I come in and out of here. But yeah, a nice bead of caulk would be real nice along that edge. That'll seal that up really nice. Too bad. Just gotta throw some paint on it now, touch that up, and uh, yeah, I like it. Uh, so I went to the big box store and I picked up this angle. This is an aluminum angle. Uh, what was on here was a metal angle and it was designed to hold um, some weather stripping that didn't you know work for this application and I'm trying to make it work. And it wasn't on there very good and, and it's, it's bent, um, which is causing the the door to sort of bend and bow too which is causing me some problems so i'm going to put this on here with some screws and some adhesive and see if we can't keep this door top straight so when it does close um, i have a better chance of it um, sealing uh, weather sealing at the top so uh, we're going to work with that for now okay all screwed on Hopefully that stiffens that door up. So let's go put it back in. Okay, so this still has a little bit of a bow in it. So what I've done is I've thrown a little block in on each end over there and I threw a clamp here in the midpoint to kind of bring it back. Um, hopefully it's not going to be too much. But I'm figuring when this epoxy sets that it'll be it'll be good so maybe we can throw a few more screws in here uh you know through the center section and see if that uh helps tighten it up keep keep it in place okay so i got an entirely different piece of of weather stripping and i've shimmed it out um here in the middle where it was lacking I'm gonna throw some caulking up there I may need a couple more screws but uh, but essentially that's gonna create a nice fit okay so looks like I got a nice seal against the door so like I say all I gotta do is throw a bead of caulk in underneath there and that'll seal that other space up and now we're gonna be bug free and air free for the most part Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you very much for tuning in. Be sure to check out next week's video. And if you like the content, be sure to like and subscribe.